Good morning. This is Dr. K. Jagannayaki, Professor in MBA Department, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundigal. So today I would like to discuss about secondary research. So what do you mean by secondary research? Research is nothing but search for facts or it is a purposive investigation and which is used to find out some answers to the questions or it may be solution to the problem. So before going to enter into a research study, so we need to have some type of information which is known as data collection. So research methods are specific procedures for collecting and analyzing the data. So unless until you don't have the data collection related to the problem, it become very difficult to find out the solution. So whenever we are planning for research methods, so we need to have two types of decisions. The first one is one should understand how to collect the data and another one is how to analyze the data. Coming to how to collect the data, it includes three ways. There are three types of data collection. First of all, we should understand whether it is qualitative or quantitative data or it is primary or secondary data or it is descriptive or experimental. Basing on the type of research, we need to find out what is the appropriate or suitable data collection methods. So the first one is if you take qualitative versus quantitative. So we should understand that what type of data would you like to go with any kind of, for example, idea or else any um, thing that you want to describe about a particular event or a situation and which cannot be quantifiable in terms of numbers. So that type of data is known as qualitative. And whereas quantitative means if you can able to measure with the help of some numeric value. So one can able to measure the association between two variables with the help of correlation analysis, where we used to tell about the degree of correlation between two variables and that can be measured in terms of facts or figures. Even if you take another example, like if you want to measure the average standard deviation and variation, that can be measurable in terms of some quantity. So that type of data is known as quantitative data. And coming to second one, the primary or secondary. So primary means whenever you are going to collect the first hand information directly from the respondents, so that type of data is known as primary data and secondary data is that which already readily available, it might have collected by someone else and that type of data you are going to use for your research study. So that type of source is known as secondary data sources. Then third one is descriptive versus experimental. So coming to descriptive means whenever you are planning to describe certain characteristics or attributes, it may be related to an individual or if you are going to tell about any type of incident kind of thing, we used to describe how it happened. And for example, if you consider how you are going to describe a person. So we used to say about the color of his hair, eyes, complexion, everything in descriptive manner. So that type of data is known as descriptive data. And sometimes we used to collect some sort of information just by conducting some kind of experiments. So that has to be decided by the investigator before going to start his research design. Then coming to the second step, how to analyze the data. So first of all, initially you have to see that what type of data collection method we have to use. Then after that, uh, the researcher has to know how to analyze the data, what type of tools and techniques is going to apply in order to analyze the data, whatever collected by him by using various data sources. So under analysis of data, again, there will be two types of data already. We have gone through one is qualitative, another one is quantitative. For example, if you are taking quantitative data, use statistical analysis methods. If you want to test the relationship between two variables, so we used to go with different types of statistical 
analysis one can use descriptive statistics correlation regression all these things they can be measurable and useful to quantify the data and that type of data is known as quantitative data and coming to the qualitative data there are some kind of thematic analysis which is used to interpret the patterns and meanings in the data so that type of data is known as qualitative data and coming to qualitative so generally the questions about the ideas so if you want to share the experiences of other people and if you are going to understand the meaning of certain concepts right and the data which cannot be described or measurable numerically that type of data is known as qualitative data okay so to find out the association of attributes or the characteristics that cannot be measurable in terms of quantity and that is known as qualitative data so this is qualitative data and when you are talking about quantitative data so quantitative data means which can be measurable in terms of numerical values so it is more mechanistic understanding of a topic or sometimes it involves hypothesis testing so when you are discussing about hypothesis testing we'll have two types of hypothesis test one is parametric another one is non parametric so parametric test exclusively used to measure certain parameters like one can measure the average they can measure the standard deviation variance dispersion kind of things and non parametric test exclusively used for qualitative research then if you want to discuss about the pros and cons of qualitative versus quantitative research so first of all i would like to discuss about the advantages of qualitative data it is flexible in nature so the researcher as per his own convenience based on the situation he can able to make some kind of changes so that he can develop a new concepts new theories so that is possible in case of qualitative data or qualitative research and another advantage is that it can be conducted with small samples see because it depends on deduction process when you are talking about logical analysis in research we will have two types of analysis one is induction other one is deduction so in case of induction you are going to start your study with a specific purpose then we are going to come out with generalization but whereas in case of deduction as you are going to consider a large volume of people and from that you are going to come to a specific group or specific purpose so that type of process is known as deduction so when you are talking about deduction process so qualitative research we are going to conduct in that case okay then coming to the disadvantages or cons of this qualitative data it cannot be analyzed statistically why there is no, no parameters or you don't want to measure the variables whatever you are talking about the association of attributes qualities kind of thing they are not quantifiable as we know so in that way it becomes very difficult to analyze statistically and moreover it is not generalizable because it is applicable to only small samples so there is no broader way of making the conclusions for entire population and another disadvantage is that it is difficult to standardize research at higher risk of research bias so as there may be a flexibility in kind uh, in terms of the data collection and the mode of methods whatever would you like to uh, utilize or use in the data analysis part so it depends on the researcher so the entire thing based on an individual researcher's judgment so wherever possibility there may be chances of researcher's bias so these are the disadvantages with qualitative research when coming to quantitative research so if you are talking about quantitative research it is applicable to entire population because it requires a larger samples within small samples 
you cannot perform this kind of research and whatever data you are going to collect under quantitative research we used to follow some systematic procedure to data collection even if you want to analyze the data we need to organize in a proper manner everything to go with a systematic way and another advantage is that see it is reproducible knowledge so whatever other people they have done basing on that uh, there is a scope for future or further research kind of things so you can able to reproduce the knowledge in different ways so that possibility is there with the help of quantitative research then coming to the disadvantages it requires statistical training to analyze the data so just like that without having not without having statistical knowledge so the investigator he do not know how to analyze the data and what is the appropriate method and which measurement of scale they have to apply kind of things so it requires statistical knowledge then only the people can able to perform quantitative research and another disadvantage is that with small samples like in case of qualitative research you may not perform with small samples we need large samples so these are the disadvantages of quantitative research then next i would like to discuss with uh, you all like about secondary research so when i am saying secondary research so it is one way of data collection where i want to discuss what is the meaning or definition of secondary data and what type of methods you are going to use to collect the data and what are the steps that are involved in secondary research i would like to discuss with you some of the examples and about the advantages and disadvantages so first of all whenever we will say secondary research so secondary research means it is desk research so sitting at your desk or in front of your system we you can easily get the data because it is already collected by someone else so readily available information through various sources and it is also known as an existing data that should be summarized and collated to increase the overall effectiveness of research so it is we are very easy comparatively primary data collection because already the material or data whatever information you want it may be published in research reports and some other documents so most of the cases this type of information secondary data we used to get from the websites public libraries and from other sources already some people they might have conducted some surveys through which we can get secondary data and government and non government agencies they are also one of the source of secondary data and it is more cost effective than primary research because when you are comparing secondary research with primary research so there it involves a lot of expenditure to carry out a survey and also it is time consuming but that may not be the case of secondary research so primary research when data is collected first hand by organizations or they will get the data through a third party so that third party is known as consultancies so on behalf of the company these consultancies they will collect the data so this kind of free consultancy work we can see in case of marketing related research so the companies directly cannot have interaction with the target group of customers so on behalf of the customers if the company want to know about the customer expectations whether their satisfaction levels towards a particular product or a service and that should be collected by the third party surveys and these third parties they will approach the customers by developing a questionnaire and they will collect the information from those people they will analyze the data and finally they are going to submit the report to the concerned companies 
So basing on that, the companies will make effective decisions. Then coming to the examples. So as one more thing, I would like to say that what is the another advantage of, of this secondary research? It is cost effective. Effective cost effective means so it may not involve uh, heavy amounts or large amount involved to carry out a research. And it is one of the most popular choice, even though you have different types of data collection methods. So we can easily get the relevant information, whatever you want from various business organizations. And not every organization they are able to pay large amount of money to conduct research to gather the data. So only large scale units, they may affordable this type of research and data can be retrieved just by sitting at your laptop or at in front of your system. So we can easily access. So just by paying a nominal amount to download the data, everything you can get within fraction of seconds. So that is the per, uh, best main advantage with secondary research methods. So coming to the examples from where we used to collect the secondary data and what are the methods that we can able to get the data. So the first one is data available on the internet. So nowadays people, they rely purely on internet. So they used to collect the information just by paying a nominal amount. So almost when you are going to compare with primary research, we can say that here we can get the data on free of cost. And another one is, so only to download certain information or relevant information, some of the sites, they may ask you to pay a nominal amount to download the data. And if you see that websites like Google and other type of websites, which will have lot of information so if you want you can get any kind of data from these sources and even the business organizations can also use this type of source to access their data whenever they want they can also retrieve whatever type of information which is necessary to the organization and only authentic and trusted website to collect information so whenever you are depending on any kind of internet source, so first of all, we see that whether the site is authentic or uh, whether it is trustable or not, basing on that only we used to uh, extract the data because we don't know some of the websites, they may also give some false information. So that end all, we have to check and basing on that, we used to collect the information using internet. Then second one is government and non-government organizations. So there are certain reports or some kind of information we can also get from the government and non-government agencies. So here they will charge cost applicable to down, uh, download the data or to use certain things. So whatever we'll get information through government and non-government agencies that is always authentic and trustworthy. So without any hesitation, one can depend on this type of data because as they are going to get directly from the concerned websites. Then next one is public libraries. So as public libraries is one of the good source to search for data and here we used to have number of copies that can be uh, arranged in a proper manner in the libraries. So people, whatever type of information or any kind of documents they want, they can easily collect from the public libraries. But the public library service, when you're talking about the services, what kind of services they are going to render. So it depends on the library. They, we can find a lot of difference. It may vary from one library to another library. So huge collection of the government publications with market statistics. So that also we can collect because where we can have other types of newsletters will be there business directories, magazines, 
न्यूज पेपर्स एवरीथिंग अवेलेबल इन पब्लिक लाइब्रेरीज सो थ्रू विच वी कैन कलेक्ट सेकेंडरी डेटा the next one is educational institutions see if you see that most of the research it is conducted in colleges and universities if you compare with any other business organizations so even business organizations what they used to do they will come to the educational institutions and whatever data they want they will collect from these people and it is one way you can say that the data whatever collected by the universities now that is also one type of primary research because the academicians what they used to do whenever they are going for any kind of research activities they will go with primary data sources rather than secondary and next one is commercial information sources so everything the commercial information sources include newspapers magazines radio tv everything so these are nowadays it becomes one of the most popular no data collection source so most of the people they are depend on only these commercial information sources rather than any other type of information so we used to have a scope to have the first hand information related to economics political situations even demographic segmentation and other similar subjects where it is related to social and economical political all type of information that we can get from the commercial information sources and whatever data we are going to obtain through these sources that is also relevant data and business not only have the opportunity to identify their prospect prospective clients but its role is something else they want to promote their products or services into the market so they have to make reach of the products and services to the ultimate consumer so during that time also they will utilize these commercial information sources so that they can so uh, maximize their profits so these sources they have a wider reach because it is one of the most effective tool through which even the companies also they can reach their customers then what are the key differences between primary research and secondary research so as we know primary means for the first time whenever you are directly interacting with the customer or any respondent so that data it is first hand information we used to collect from the concerned person so the researcher owns the data collected so the researcher he will become is the owner of the data because he directly going to get this type of information but coming to secondary research it is based on readily available data so if you compare primary data the data is raw in nature which do not have any uh, like uh, meaningful information when you are going to classify organize and arranging the data in a systematic manner and where you can able to segregate what is the relevant data and what is irrelevant so the researcher is going to consider only the relevant data that fulfills the purpose of the research so if you are not doing that type of initially you will collect the information which do not have any meaning so that type of data is known as raw data and secondary research is is based on the tried and tested data because already it is analyzed so previously the people they might have arranged in a proper manner and that data you are going to utilize and third one is if about the primary research it fits the needs of a researcher so as per our convenience there should be a purpose out of which you are going to collect the data up your own interest so that type of data is known as primary data and it fulfills the exact need of the researcher but whereas coming to secondary research so the data whatever collected by others either it may or may not fulfill the requirement of the researcher and next difference is that 
in case of primary data the researchers involvement will be more when you are going to compare with secondary data sources so collection of data primary data it involves lot of time consuming and it is highly expensive when you are comparing the same in with uh, secondary research so we can easily acquire the secondary data depending on various sources either one can go with the internet or public libraries government or non government agencies etc and next difference is primary research is an expensive process and it consumes lot of time to collect and analyze the data and where is coming to secondary research comparatively primary research the process will go at faster pace and why because the information is already readily available so this researcher should also know where to get the data okay so these are the basic differences between primary and secondary data sources then coming to the process how to conduct a secondary research so what are the steps involved in secondary research process the first one is identify topic of the research so before going to study anything first of all we should identify the area of interest so the topic that needs research then list out the research attributes and what is the purpose of your research so that should be mentioned clearly then basing on that you are going to identify your research source this is the second step in involved in secondary research so research source means what type of data you want to collect whether you want to depend on primary or secondary then comes collecting collect existing data so here collect existing data data is nothing but literature review so there are two types of literature review one is empirical literature another one is conceptual literature so empirical means what others they have done in their research what kind of inputs you will get from other related closely associated topics that are already done by someone else and various sources like newspapers public libraries government and non government agencies through which we can extract this empirical literature but coming to conceptual literature it depends upon the concept of your research and that should be collected through the textbooks some other type of information and next one is combine and compare so combine and compare means once you have collected the data basing on the primary or secondary data so then you have to combine the collected data arrange in a systematic manner then compare the data for any is there any kind of duplication so that type of data should be removed and only use the data which is required for your research survey the next step is analyze data then after the combine and compare then we have to understand what is appropriate or suitable method whether you want to use the statistical tools or else you want to go with hypothesis testing to analyze the data so these are the steps involved in secondary research process then next one is advantages of secondary research so if you are going to compare with primary data source secondary information is readily available because already it is collected by someone else and it is less expensive and time less time consuming and we need to pay only a nominal amount to download the data from various sources the data collected through secondary research it gives organizations an idea about the effectiveness of primary research so one can evaluate what type of the research 
we can measure the effectiveness based on the secondary data and another advantage is that through secondary research we can form a hypothesis and we can able to evaluate by using different types of test parametric and non parametric test and it is very faster to conduct because of availability of data and we can complete the secondary research within a short span of time so these are some of the advantages of secondary research then coming to the disadvantages even though the data is readily available the credibility evaluation must be performed to understand the authenticity of the information available because it is collected by someone else so we don't know about whatever data they have extracted from by using different sources the information may be true so that is one of the disadvantages with secondary research and another one is we cannot get the latest information through secondary data sources and third one is that the data may not be accurate so there is no guarantee that sometimes the researcher bias will be there in the collection of data and it derives its conclusion from collective primary research data and it depends on the quality of research already conducted by primary researchers so these are the disadvantages of secondary research then how you are going to analyze the data what type of methods we have to use in order to carry out the secondary research so the method for analyzing the data it depends on the type of data collected and how to prepare data analysis so it depends if you are going with primary data then you have to use different methods if the data is related to secondary or it is either qualitative or quantitative basing on that we need to use different types of methods to analyze the data so data can often be analyzed both qualitatively and quantitatively for example when you are conducting a survey or you are going for a field research the responses could be analyzed both qualitatively and quantitatively means when you are going to study the meaning of responses then we have to go with qualitative method if you want to study the frequencies of responses then we have to go with quantitative methods so qualitative analysis it is used to understand the words ideas and experiences of the people so where we are going to apply the qualitative methods like uh, open ended surveys interviews and literature reviews case studies ethnographics all these things they will use text rather than the numbers so that type of information for that we need to analyze the data using qualitative methods and using non probability sampling methods and it is flexible and relies on researchers judgment so the complete qualitative data or qualitative research it depends upon the choice of the researcher whatever assumptions done to avoid research bias then coming to quantitative analysis it uses numbers and statistic to understand the frequencies so for example if you want to measure the average height average salary so that type of things can be comes under the category of descriptive statistics where we are going to dis- describe certain characteristics of the frequency distribution and even if you are talking about to find out the cause and effect relationship so that should be conducted and we can analyze this type of data in experimental research so we there is a scope to go with quantitative analysis to interpret the data whatever collected by the researcher and whenever you are using quantitative analysis the data can be interpreted in two ways the first one is during an experiment so whenever you are conducting any kind of experiment we used to note down the readings in terms of numerical value so whatever 
readings you used to have that should be analyzed by using appropriate methods if you want to measure the speed velocity kind of thing that we can conduct with the help of any experiments and another way using probability sampling methods so what is the chance of occurring in non occurrence of a particular event that can be analyzed with the help of probability so because the data is collected and analyzed in a statistically valid way so if you want to analyze the data we need to use statistical tools and techniques so the result of this kind of quantitative analysis they can be easily standardized and shared among the researchers so if you are talking about quantitative analysis whatever methods you are going to use they are uh, like uh, where whoever will use that type of method they can generate the same type of result then finally uh, just by summarizing summarizing the entire thing i want to express in one table the research methods for analyzing data so first of all we should understand what type of and method you are going to use to analyze the data statistical analysis so when you are going for statistical analysis we should know whether it is qualitative or quantitative research method so if it is quantitative so statistical analysis means you remember that it is a quantitative research and when to use means to analyze the data collected in a statistically valid manner either you are going to collect the information using experiment surveys or observation methods then we have to go with statistical analysis then second type of analysis is known as meta analysis it is quantitative in nature and to statistically analyze the result of large collection of studies it means it is applied to those studies in a statistically valid manner again it is comes under quantitative research and third one is thematic analysis so that is also comes under qualitative so here whenever you are collecting data through some personal interviews focus group interviews or textual sources so try, if you want to understand what is the general theme of or aim of your data and how they are communicated then in that way we are going for thematic analysis and next one is content analysis so it depends either would you like to go with qualitative or quantitative it depends on the choice of the researcher and in this case to analyze large volume of textual or visual data which is collected from surveys literature reviews and other sources and it can be both quantitative or qualitative so it depends on the researcher he has to decide basing on the purpose of the research and what type of data collection methods and basing on that he need to select the appropriate statistical tools or any other type of analysis to analyze the data so thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates